712. Pike. Hi. <laughs> This is ThinkTech. Uh, welcome to Going Forward on ThinkTech, taking us forward. I'm your host. Our show today is called Jill and Jake on Opera. <laughs> now we're going we're gonna to talk about a family of famous opera stars visit Hawaii. We're going to address <laughs> the issue of whether it's great to have opera stars like this visiting Hawaii. If you want to ask a question, participate in, in the discussion, you can tweet us at ThinkTech or call us at ThinkTech HI or call us at 415-871-2474. Our guests for the show are Jill Gardner and Jake Gardner, husband and wife. Jill is a soprano and Jake is a baritone and they appear on Taking Us Forward today to talk about the many roles they have sung at the Hawaii Opera Theater and other opera companies around the country. We're going to talk about opera companies around the country. I'm going to talk about the quality of opera, uh, opera productions in Hawaii and we're going to talk about the master class at the Orvis Auditorium they'll be conducting during their current trip. Welcome to the show Jill and Jake. It's great to have you. In fact, Thank it's an you. honor and a delight to have you here in our studio. <laughs> well, thank you. We're yeah, we delighted. We are, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it's great. It's, I love being near opera stars. They radiate, you know. There's something about them. Well, they're, they're so powerful personalities and all that. Uh, yes, that's a part of the reason why I think we get attracted to doing it as well. Yeah. You know. Well, I want to make a full disclosure, you guys. <laughs> okay. I cry during nearly every opera. Wow, every yeah, opera. Yeah. And uh, why do you cry? I, I, I don't I wanted to ask you why I cry. Uh -huh. I try it I, I cry at Traviata every yeah. time. You, you know, well, that's one of your favorites, sense. I know. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I certainly try at cry at Tosca. I love Tosca. And Madame and Butterfly. Some of the that's Madame right. Butterfly wow. always. Well, not I see you're talking a lot of Puccini me. here. Yeah. And yeah, Puccini was a are. master at that. So why do I cry? Can you tell me why I cry? Um, because you are taken into a story and that there's a human truth in that story mm -hmm. and you bring your truth to that story and it causes you to cry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the emotional context, I think. Mm -hmm. And if opera's done really well, then it's a cathartic experience. What you're watching on the stage relates to you in your life, maybe specific situations, but at least the human experience of what that is. And we would, we're very happy when you cry. Yeah. <laughs> you because, these, because these composers are the great channelers of Western civilization. Yes. These are, these are, they're all geniuses. Yeah. And Can you imagine sitting somewhere. in front of a blank piece of paper and coming out with Tosca? Yeah, or, right. Or coming out with uh, Peter Grimes or something. It, it astounds me. So the genius goes beyond the music. It goes beyond the libretto. It goes to our hearts. It goes to reaching us, touching us, finding this kind of common denominator of human experience. That Absolutely. is really something. Yeah. Well, and that's why I think they, they oftentimes talk about opera is the um, culmination of so many different art forms put together on the, that are then presented on the stage. So you're... It's a dramatic situation that's being highlighted completely by this emotional musical context. Yeah. And then when you have really good singing actors and you have the theater with the costumes and the sets that are sometimes very traditional in their production, sometimes not. I and think the Hawaii atmosphere Apple of being there with a large group of people with Butterfly that way. Uh, putting your attention on that. That's right. Yeah. My that's why it's all-encompassing. My wife uh -huh. and I went to the Bastille uh, one mm -hmm. time. Uh, not to go to in jail. France. No, no, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> it was Tosca. They were playing Tosca. Yeah. yeah. There was a chair. There was one chair. That was one chair. That's right. Well, that's what I mean. You know, and sometimes for some people that's a fantastic experiment experience because then it's basically the the set is so minimal that it allows the audience and the performers to really base themselves within the yeah. the structure of that human dynamic Which story can be a, that they're a trying huge to tell. Uh, challenge for us. Yes. Uh, you know, the stage, I remember doing in uh, Dresden doing a Don Giovanni in which there were no properties meaning no props, no mm. chairs, no just us on this it was kind of a, it was a, a, a letter, a list of names and it was kind of a cockeyed square that was raked. And this is more challenging for you. Yeah, well, you yeah, yeah because there's no, there's no, nothing to hide behind. There's it's no context. Only about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only about you, and, and yeah. so there's no, no time off. So I need, I need <laughs> full disclosure from you guys too. You, okay. At your favorite operas, at the ones that touch you, do you cry? 
Oh, oh gosh, yes. yes. Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, my God. And always in the rehearsal process, and my I've been a professional opera singer now for 12 years, and the majority of my repertoire that I've sung during that time has been Italianate and primarily Puccini. And there's always a point at the re in the rehearsal process to where I challenge myself to go really very, very, very much into the context. In kind of in a first person sort of way. In a first person kind of context. So there's always the place where I become very emotional, have to, you know, stop the rehearsal, take a break. You really? know, oh, yes, that, because, that because you're challenging me. yourself to go yeah. to that level personally. And I like to do that so that then in my performance, I'm informed by that. I don't have to go there to know that that's living yeah. right inside of yeah. me, but I do know that that's oftentimes why people's reactions after my performances are very highly emotional. Yeah. And then I know I've done my job. Yeah, well, <laughs> if right? you are emotional, we, the audience, can, uh, I like to get up front myself. Yes. Uh, we, the audience, can see it and feel it, and it affects us. But there's also another side of it that that's you, right. the, the, one of the great uh, added, adages, is that right? Yeah. Is that if you're, as a performer, if if you're feeling it too much, they're not feeling anything. Ah. So in the end, that's what she's saying. She goes to that place we have and a feels it. And then when you can't really uh. go there and, and and do your job, so at that point you become a storyteller. That's yeah. right. And then that allows your audience to cry. But if you're crying, probably won't sound that good. Yeah, right. <laughs> you have to some distance. Well, it's just like the juicy streetcar named Desire okay, streetcar. January. Right? Mm, the you were wonderful Blanche. in streetcar. Thank we you. saw that. We loved it. What, well, what, what well, a challenging role, opera, too. That's right. <laughs> and the, and the, it's a challenging opera. It's a very difficult story. And the role of the, what happens to Blanche Dubois in that you know dramatic arc is extremely troubling and difficult. So, yeah, there were several times in the rehearsal process to where, because that was my debut of the role, that were very hard. But in the end, what ends up happening is that you have to go moment by moment by moment telling of that story. So yeah. that by the end of it, the brokenness of that character yeah. is fully delivered because that's what you're bringing to the stage. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not reacting as to Blanche's complete and utter, you know, breakdown. Yeah. I'm doing that breakdown. Yeah. So it's a much more active stance at that point, which is where he would call it being a storyteller, than yeah. it is me living it. So what she that. has is all of Blanche's you know. all of Blanche's information. She has everything that she says. She knows the historical context of this of this uh, story. Which and I she love. and so she takes <laughs> this all in and then in the end it, I, I believe if she really does her job to to the to her, the highest degree, she just stands there as Jill, mm -hmm. and so that because Jill is also key in that portrayal because yeah. it's all happening at it's one interpreting time. Interpreting and, and yeah, laying yeah. it out piece by piece, and, and how it how it relates th and yeah. travels through her yeah. experience, oh, this emotion. This is great to hear you talk about this. this is really <laughs> great. So you know, you talk about historical context. You know, I think a lot of people do not know about New Orleans. They don't know right. about Tennessee right. Williams. They don't know what it's like. And I think, you know, I mean, and, and I know some. I've been there, and I appreciate Tennessee Williams. But when I saw you on the stage, I I was transported to that time and place. I was there, mm -hmm. and I understand the you know the depravity of it. I understand right. the problems in that time, uh, and I lived you know I lived in that time with you, um, and that, right. and that makes it very interesting because then you learn the history. You, you are transported. Well, and I think it's a, uh, particularly to, in today's opera world where being, it's, you have to be able to sing these roles, but a lot is being demanded now within our art form because we do have so much influence from TV, you know, Netflix series, cinema, theater. So it's really, a, we, are, we are asked to not only be wonderful singers, but we're asked to be singing actors. Yeah. So, and we, Jake yeah, and I yeah, really and, love and, and, that. Which is not to say that the early singers were not singing actors, That's but true. the style was very different. Very we're, different. We've, just like uh, film acting has changed, Correct. so has our acting. Well, you know, the old story of the uh, the big Balabusa uh, opera star standing there belting it out, yeah. not moving one foot during park the whole Park and opera. Bark, we love to call it. Park and Bark. <laughs> park and Bark. <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, you heard it here on Think Tank. Yeah, that's right. Well, if it's a really good barker, I don't mind. I don't either. We love great singing. I love great we, singing. For that's us, for us that's, always that's the whole. That's, 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 that yeah. is the 
<laughs> but we are dramatic animals. And so for us, it is important that we do our research, do our historical context uh, uh, role study, so that when we are on that stage, we are inhabiting that character within and that the time personification period. The personification of the story and, and, and it and takes the, and a lot character. of time. Yeah. You know, and like for, for yeah. something like Blanche Dubois, I studied that for over a year in order to be able to even get to what I wanted to well, bring. Funny to way, this. that opera is more difficult, don't you think? Given the historical context, given the dynamic of the opera, the arc, well, as the, you call and it, and the iconic nature of the play, and also the the um, movies that were made of it, for yeah. instance, and the Americana of it. Yes. Right. Yeah. This yeah. and well, but that's where, as a Southern woman, I was able, I think, to really bring that dimension, that dimension as well, that dynamic yeah. and dimension as well, yeah. because so, there's its culture. You talk about. Uh, singing, you know, yep. and I think people people don't fully understand what it takes to sing on stage as an opera singer. You're I, absolutely I think you're absolutely right. right. It, takes, it takes a lot. They have, really they have a tendency thing. to think, you know, well, gee, they have a nice voice. Yeah. But in fact, it's a it's a huge multitasking thing yes. that you're doing. You're dealing with technical things. You're dealing with your physical self, and you're dealing with your costume, and you're dealing with the, the story, and then you're dealing with a, a, a theater with two over 2,000 seats in it. Yeah. So the beginning is the, the, the singing voice unamplified reaching to the back. Unamplified is the, is the operative word yes. there. Yeah, absolutely. You have, to, you have to have the strength, and that's, that doesn't come naturally. Well, you have to work on well, that. Well, the strength, the, the balance, the, yeah, yes. it, takes a, it takes a lot. So how do you achieve that? Well, many years of study. I think that, you know, for instance, I got into, I love to say that I got into opera through the back door because I was raised as a pianist and I studied piano all the way through high school. Very, very, that, that's what I wanted to do. And I got a full scholarship to be able to go and get my undergraduate in piano. But I always sang, I sang in church, I did shows in high school. And so by the time I got to my undergraduate on the scholarship to, to study piano performance, I took a voice minor. And I had a fantastic teacher, and that, that's when my ability really showed itself. And so at that juncture, I entered competitions and won, had some success on the stage singing, and so everybody was like, why don't you want to become an opera singer? And I was like, well, because I want, I'm a pianist. I want to become a pianist. So, but the truth is, then I went on to do my master's in piano and voice performance, went on and did some young artist training programs, and then I went professional in 2005. So how does one become an opera singer? Well, we love to oftentimes and, and say that every singer has their own individual path. But you have to have an incredible um, background in music. You I have mean, to have genetic talent in music? You have to have genetic talent in music. Uh, yes, I think so. I, I think mean, but, so. but for me, that's one of the great mysteries. Because it, why, do I, why did I look at this and get introduced to this and go, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. I really want to do this. Yeah. I didn't have anything in my background that really pointed yeah. me in that direction other than that in, when I, in my family, um, some sort of musical training was, was you know, required. Very, very, kind of required for a, an educated person. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys are like an American phenomenon. What I mean is, you know, the classic opera stars, you know, a generation or two or three ago, they didn't have graduate degrees. That's right. <laughs> right. right. They didn't study music through college and graduate school. Um, it was a different path. Uh, but I think one thing is constant, and that is you need a teacher. You need a mentor. Yeah. Absolutely. Somebody to coach you and encourage you and make, make you do they your now best. Call it, they now call it having a team. And you see, I love my husband, but I have such admiration you, for him as an artist because he's been in this business for 45 years. I've been professional now for almost 13. So I have a lot of respect for how he has done his career. And it has influenced me, it has inspired me. But I think where Jake, when Jake started in the American operatic scene, and when I came in, you know, 20 to 25 years later, it's very different now. But I think that the road still, if you're going to be a true, um, and take your art, true to your art form, the road is still the same. 
so that you have to have that kind of talent, you have to love this kind of music, you have to study your butt off in order to get better and better because the competition gets stiffer and stiffer. Ah, another point. Yes, yeah. and there are more and more people wanting, wanting to, do to do it. This. But you're, the teacher is the key. The teacher right. is, the, is the person who opens the door for you to look in and if you have that bone in your foot, you see. I mean, I, I, if I had someone that with, with the same teacher standing next to me who didn't, they would go and say, what? That's I mean, right. I don't, so it's kind of, it's a marriage between the teacher and the student. And it lasts a long and time. In fact, it lasts, uh, would I say, forever? Yeah. As long as you sing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, there, there'll, they'll always be a part of that. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so exactly big right. question. This is, to me, this is really a question. I don't know the answer. I have no idea. Do you guys coach each other? Absolutely. Yeah, we do. Is that right? You listen Absolutely. to each other and critique each other? It's taken a long was... time, but it's, it's it ended. It, it, what is happening now is that this relationship, because Jake and I sing, but we always knew when we met that we wanted to teach. And now we have developed, we've been married 15 years, been together 19. But now we have, I think, really gotten into a place to where we are central to one another. Not that we don't have our own coaches or teachers, but we need one another as ears, eyes, everything in that That's process. That's the other part of this is it is ongoing. <laughs> I've been right. doing this 45 years. I still have yeah. people hear me, listen to me, give me suggestions. Yeah. It's a study it never that never, stops. never, never ends. It's like a boxer, you know. <laughs> you <laughs> got to have somebody <laughs> say you're exactly. favoring your right, you're but, favoring but, your left. I, was just, I just went down to do a, 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 was a quick job down in San Antonio. They lost the singer. They asked me. I came in late and they were you all. Knew they, the role. Yes. I knew if I hadn't sung it in three and a half years and it was one that I sang for the first time here actually. It was uh, Bartolo in, in uh, Barbara Seville. And, but so I, I, I said yes on knowing that she would be able to come to the last four or five days so that she could then, she's the final word on what, where I am. She knows me that well. We're going to take a break now, okay. guys. When we come back, I'd like to talk about the roles you've had, the ones you've enjoyed, right. the ones you've enjoyed most, uh, okay. and the houses you've played. But before we take the break, I have to ask you one more question. If, if you didn't know somebody at all, I mean a complete stranger, and you engaged in a conversation with that stranger, could you tell if that stranger was a trained opera singer? Could you tell? No. Because voice and singing is different. Yeah. Right? That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, no, That's you right. Could, no, no. You, probably not. You, you might have an uh, inkling. You know, like when people talk to me, you know, they think I'm loud, right? Well, they'd you know? be right about that. But, I, but I'm listening to you and the way you enunciate, right? Uh, the way you breathe, right? Um, the way the way it all comes out. There's a certain resonance. I mean, in all voice, there is music of some kind. Even Absolutely. Just saying hi. That's right. Um, so I don't know, but 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 you're right. I mean, it's, it's two different things. That's right. I can't necessarily tell. Right. But I but I. Like to think I can tell with you guys. <laughs> we're gonna take a you short a break. <laughs> we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about the houses and the operas, and, and we're gonna make me cry some more. That's right. Uh, and, the and the studio. And the studio. Yeah. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii's leading digital media platform for civic engagement, raising public awareness on tech, energy, diversification, and globalism. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. You're playing Scorpio. I am. And I'm playing Tosca, that's okay. right. Okay. Uh, that is a fabulous picture. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fabulous picture. Not, not that that's one. That's right. 
Because you gave us one picture that I, I don't know if we, uh, the staff can find it, but I would like to look at this picture, study this picture. It's the picture where Tosca is, is killing yeah. Scarpio. A quick story about uh, the first Tosca we did together, how, how, how we know each other helps us go further in, the, in, in that, uh, depicting that story. But the first time we did it, we fought. She was after me. What you're trying? You're trying to control me. And she was. We, I can remember we were in, in a restaurant just story. having a <laughs> knockdown drag out. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Now this drama yes. there. I'm yeah. telling you now. This picture burned a hole in my head just looking at it. But we oftentimes say now that we work on. We work through a lot of stuff <laughs> in that rehearsal process, yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. But that's what he was saying. But, but now, was, given given that we know each other, that we we you can actually go further and be even worse and, and more dastardly Intense. because <laughs> you know, it's, not, it's not someone you don't know, it's someone who gets it. You trust. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, in, in every uh, performance of uh, Tosca, um, when uh, Scar Scarpio gets, gets out there on the stage for the curtain call, am I right? Everywhere, they all know, right? You boo Scorpio. Well, sometimes. Not, sometimes. <laughs> Not always. Not ah, always. Okay, okay. The most fun is the kids. They really always do. <laughs> yeah, because they see him as a villain. And well, yeah, which well, he, he is. is. He is. You know? He's not a nice fella. So, you know, one time I went to the, the Met, and uh, was it Tosca? Might have been. And it was an opening night. The New York uh, audience was very astute. And at the end of the, uh, the program, uh, I heard them booing. It was, it was Tosca. I heard them booing. The problem is they were booing everybody. And uh, it was a very discerning New York audience. This is a risk in opera, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That this audience decided they didn't like the performance at all, any aspect, right down to the conductor. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you know, and that happens today. Does it really? Oh, absolutely. Does it happen that happens only today. in New York or in Chicago or anywhere. Well, when you refer to the Met, I mean, you know, I think that there are a lot of like the most recent production that they made of Tosco. They sort of put away the Zeffirelli. Production and the newest one that they have has not been well received by the audience from the standpoint of the set, from the standpoint of the direction. Um, sometimes it does have to do with the conducting, but yeah. you know, I think that's the chance that they're taking when they update or change for a production as traditional take a as risk. Yeah. Tosca which happens really between 24 hours, you know, on this particular date in June, that if once you start venturing out of that world, not that we don't love the artistic risk, that, that that's because we have done a, a production of Tosca that has been translated into the 1940s, sort of 1950s fascist Italy. So it's been updated. And it can uh, work, but which Jake I think, is often I, which I don't think is successful because that the context of that piece is so specific. It's so specific. Yes, it's like, like to a just having yeah. one one chair there doesn't really tell the story. I yeah. think it is not one that that translates or well. Or putting Scarpia in an SS uniform. You know, people, because that history is still very close to us today. And so the you idea know? is to make it more relevant, but at the same time, to put him in an SS uniform diminishes him. That's it does. Right. It does. That's I, right. it's, it, to, me, to me, I'm a classical guy. To me, I would rather the audience learn about the period I where the agree. composer created this instead of changing the period because the audience, they don't think the audience will understand the original period. Right. <laughs> Let's it's look at the original first. Well, that's know? where, like what you were saying earlier, context, context, context. And that's where I think then the education up to the public on behalf of the opera company, you know, in, in metropolitan areas, Chicago, Houston, New York, Washington, San Francisco, you are going to have an audience there that probably has, that are big opera lovers and has have seen many productions. Have a lot of, have a perspective. Have a perspective. And, and certainly Europe even more so. Absolutely. That's why you yeah. see things in Paris, That's okay, Germany. but I think then it behooves the opera company to educate the public on what they're getting ready to see. Now like Butterfly, for instance, they did a, an incredible production here at Hawaii Opera Theater. This was under Henry Aquino? under Henry Aquina, who, it was the story and the context, but it was in a minimalistic. Yes, I saw that. Kaneko's, I yeah. believe, right, production. And so, but, and it was received very well. You know, but I think they did a lot in order to prepare the audience and and to educate people through yeah. shows like this. And it this. was consistent with the cultural, the Correct. Japanese cultural tradition, Correct. you know. Correct. <laughs> Speaking of butterfly, do you guys ever have them? 
Yeah. Butterfly? Oh, oh my sure. God. Yes, of yeah, course. Yeah. Particularly for a debut. Mm. There's so. no way. You know, I've done, I, I did my 50th performance of Tosca last fall, for instance. And Jake said to me early on, when that was clear it was going to become a signature role in my career, he said, they used to say when he was working in Dresden as principal baritone there in Cologne, or rather in Cologne, they used to say all the time, you don't really know a role until you've sung it 25 times. <laughs> Well, and now I do understand. And you buy that, you accept that. Yeah, yes, it's because, well, you can practice it, you can do it, but once, you, once you're in front of the audience with the onus of telling the story, it takes you about 20 performances to then to say, really get to, it. to really wear it and know it. Know it. It's so like uh, we're running stand. out of time, and I, I do want to catch the most important thing, at least of your trip, I think. Yes, yes. it's the master's class. Can you, me, can you tell me what that is? Yes, well, Hawaii Opera Theater is very special in the fact that they have had this Maisie Orvis Opera Studio, a young artist studio, but they also allow for many people within the community who are chorus members or who have a love for singing to be a part of this studio. They, I think it's it really started under Henry, Henry Aquinas' mm -hmm. administration, but we're very excited that as Henry retires and they move into a new administration, they're wanting to continue to further this. And so this is our eighth workshop with the Maisie Orvis Studio to where we've come in the past for four weeks, now we're here for about two, two and a half weeks. And a select group of people from the studio, we have 10 singers on this particular show that we're doing on June the 17th mm -hmm. in the Sacred Hearts Chapel. So it's a performance, the it, public can come and see it. Yes. Absolutely. But you're ramping up to it. Yeah. Yes, and, and the reason being that you, can, you cannot learn this in a studio, you can That's only right. learn this performing. Yeah. So you have to prepare, and you have to give the person you're preparing a chance to try it out and have That's their right. butterflies. And mm -hmm. then also the onus of being watched. <laughs> yes, it's performing. Is, is, is it's an huge. engagement there. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Well, we can't do what we do without an audience. It's a full circle effect, right? And the composers can't do it without us. Yeah. That's right. Thank God. Sure. Sure. So, right. they, so we get to hang out with them <laughs> every day. That's yeah. right. It's a, it's and synergy, the other, and the other thing multiple that, parts. And, yeah. the, the Energy of multiple parts. And the thing that we do is also we put we, we put together a little collage of scenes, and so it's not sort of walk out, sing, walk back. In recital format. Yeah. So that we put it in sort of a theatrical juxtaposition, so that there's a, it's about putting some acting skills together That's right. along with the communication. That's what this is so about. So if you want to uh, participate, if you want to attend uh, on June 17th. Um, at 7.30. At 7.30. It will be in the chapel at Sacred Hearts Do you have, okay. um, you have to call And go to the uh, Hawaii There's Opera no, Theater just website. Just go to the Hawaii Opera it's Theater website and you'll find the information yeah. about that. But we well, would love to fill that chapel for these 10 singers because they're terrific singers. That's and, and we are so thankful that Hawaii Opera Theater wants to foster this kind of local talent from the our, from our local Ohana. I think it's very important. Yeah. Uh, HawaiiOpera.org. Um, Hawaii Opera, that's right, dot .org. But, but you know, uh, we could we could do another show with some of your singers. Yeah, uh, sure. You know, because you're going to be doing the same kind of coaching we were talking about before. Yeah. We're trying to train we them. Work, we, work, oh, we, work with their, we work with their breath, we work with their language, we work with uh, how they manipulate their... Yeah. Yeah. You very, guys very are wonderful. so full of togetherness, really. <laughs> um, can, can we, uh, I don't know if you can do a duet on something or you want to go individual, but I would like to fill the room with some do music it, if I you don't mind. Well. Can you do that? Okay. Oh, uh, no, okay. Uh, we met at nine. We met at eight. I was on time. No, you were late. Ah, uh, yes, I remember it uh. well. <laughs> we dined with friends. We dined alone. A tenor sang. A baritone. Ah, uh, uh, yes, I remember <laughs> it well. That, what was next? That, the very brilliant, that dancing April moon. There was none that night. And June. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It warms my heart to know that you remember still the way you do. Ah, uh, yes. I, I remember, remember it well. well. <laughs> A little 
little Jim from GT. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> thank you, Jill. Thank you, Jake. You're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, uh, Simon. Uh, and uh, thank and you, Jim shout out to WD Wonderful. Kratos. That's <laughs> right. None of this would be here without her. Yeah. That's right. Thank you Absolutely. so much, you guys. I want to see you again soon. All righty. Absolutely. We would love to. And I can cry again. Yes. <laughs>